I'm Kevin Mamajek, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Okay, this station is a um, was built for uh, BAS Fest, so a shout out to them. They there were a bunch of folks that asked a couple questions on how I did uh, building analytics with the temperatures, where I looked at the building as a data set, and then as a floor as a data set, and then down into individual air handlers. So this is a, a station I put together for the demonstration, and then we'll kind of walk through um, how that goes. So just to kind of um, quickly go over some of the components, right? In my analytics service that I have running, um, I have a series of pollers. These pollers are going to execute the request for the analytics. So I have them all manual. Um, usually when I build things out, I do manual. That way I can see the actual time it takes to do those uh, processes. So usually I would break it up into a building, floor, AHU, or room level um, for these uh, cyclical polars. Um, so that's how I'm going to execute those commands. Um, I have a series of points that I'm going to uh, tag. I actually use uh, the tag dictionary service. So I have a series of rules that will execute. So prior stations, I told you never to direct tag. <laughs> And then I would direct tag in the demo. So I ate my own dog food. There's rules in this station that I use to actually apply or um, imply those tags. So if you come down here and you look at, um, let's see, some of my tag rules, you'll see that I have motion, humidity, temperature. If you look at, you know, this breakdown temperature, I have a condition, which is and, which means it has to um, both be true. So I have an or statement that allows me to essentially look at the names and I'll just kind of open them up where I say I'm, I'm not um, I don't want to worry about the upper lower case of the um, phrase I'm looking for so I'm looking for room temp it doesn't matter what is upper or lower case it converts it all to the same case for comparison so I'm looking for explicitly room temp or um, temp sensor I didn't do any fancy wild cards uh, to insert um, you know this inside of a name you can add those, but you just get an idea uh, on how some of these rule libraries work. So implied um, with the tag dictionary, implied um, tags. So if we come down here and we look at um, edit tags and we go over here to um, zoom in the window here to implied, right? You'll see that here's HS air, HS sensor and HS temp. So those were part of the rule if we come down here to see what tags I imply, air, sensor, and temp. Okay, so the uh, tag dictionary is working. Um, I have essentially a little note here to kind of remind me that I have rules in place to tag the appropriate um, temperature. I just did that for the station. Um, I don't usually do that as the best practice because I know those rules are engaged. So with that, let's take a look at uh, how the building looks. So if we come down here to um, close the services down, look at our building. I'm going to make sure the polars are always there. So we can kind of close this tab, close this tab, uh, we'll go back to our points. So polar is there. So if we come down here to the building logic, you'll see that um, the way I break this up, is I've kind of figured out in, you know, I kind of made it my best practice that A, any analytic proxy points, I expose the pull slot. And then I've, I've kind of regulated to creating my analytic logic in its own folder. That way it's easily uh, templatable. And then I can deploy it as a template and update it. So where I'm going to go with this is that each of these logic layers um, are the same requests, but they happen at different levels. So I have a, a building level, a floor level, and then just to, to keep consistency, I have a, a room level, okay? Each of these is the same as the previous. So if you look at this, the building logic is the same as the floor logic, the same as the room logic. The only thing I do is I change my notes around just to tell me where I'm going. And how that works is because these proxy points are relative. So essentially this pattern will always go to the node above it. So if you look at node, it's going to go up to building and that's where it's going to start to look. So at this layer, it's going to actually capture all the floors and all the rooms. If I'm down at the floor level, 
right? And I look at this, it's doing the same thing, but it's only going to the floor. It's not gonna do the entire building. So I will only capture that floor. So that's important. You can, you can check where it goes, right, with the node. I can click there. Um, now, note, it went to building. So what just happened? So I'm gonna go back. You have to remember, in order to actually see where this goes, you have to be inside the actual proxy point. So if I go down into the actual proxy point and then click play, it will go to the floor level, right? And so we look at the floor, it would capture all the rooms, okay? So that's pretty much uh, how I set that up. So let's go and um, look at this building logic and let's get some uh, data in there, right? So um, usually you'll go into the service. When you add points, you'll refresh the cache and you're off to the races. So, okay, so what happened? Um, I don't have any data, even though I refreshed crash, cache because I'm, no, I'm not doing an automatic polar. I have to actually trigger it. So I'm going to go in here and say execute the polar. You'll see that it goes and we get uh, 33 points. Come back and hmm, I don't have any information. So first thing I usually do is I refresh the cache, but I know that's not going to work. And uh, let's take a look at um, let's go take a look at some of the points. So part of um, my station is I created it brand new. So I added the analytic service, I configured it, and that's probably where my mistake is. But a sign that I missed, a telltale sign when I missed is when I showed the tags, the implied tags right here, right? There should be a direct tag, one that's automatically applied, the A colon A, and it's not there. So I didn't catch it at first, uh, and I can't tell you how many times I sometimes don't catch it. Um, it will sneak up on you, and then when you realize it, you're like, oh, right? So, because you could you could waste hours um, if you you don't understand what's happening. So, what I'm going to do is let's take a look at this analytic service, because what I want is I want those A colon A tags to apply automatically, and you'll see down here this auto tag analytic it defaults to false. So I want to make sure it's set to true so that it does that work for me. Otherwise, it's it's kind of tedious. I'd have to add that tag every single time I added a point that I'm going to reference or, or look for. So I'm going to do that. Notice 33, uh, another telltale sign um, after I've done this uh, recording twice. <laughs> is that these are all zero. So that's another clue that your, your A colon A tag doesn't exist because I should have um, a point count um, of actual points that are being ingested. So that was a, another clue I missed. So I turned it on. Let's go over here, refresh the cache now that it's on. And then we can come down here into our building logic and oops, what did I do? I have to pull, right? So go ahead and execute the polar. And again, I'm making this a little, um, a little more tedious because of the manual polar. If you have it set to five seconds, that's fine. I, I create this so that I get a true reading of how long it takes uh, for it to calculate all those points. So now if you come down here, yay, we got numbers, right? So we can see the max temp is 72, the max humidity is 45%, and the maximum CO2 is uh, 450. So everything is executing as I want it. Um, notice that again, I only created one data set. That way I know what the numbers are, right? And I'm gonna show you down here too, um, this, um, this, rooms with motion and and room sensors found i'm getting not a number there but that's because of the data set so i do a little trickery for this in that i sum booleans right so <laughs> you can't really sum true or false but you can right secretively right what is true true is one false is zero so i'm i'm, I'm asking the algorithm to add up all the trues that it finds that way i know um what rooms have triggered motion. The problem is if I only have one true or false, one value, it kind of wigs out. It just doesn't know what to do because it can't do that. And then this is a count for those. So you'll see these come alive once I get more rooms um, and more floors. Okay, so let's take this now and um, just to kind of show this here, let's um, first of all go into a floor and let's duplicate the room. So we'll go ahead and duplicate these. So we've got now um, four rooms, 
right? And we'll leave all those temps the same. And then if we come down into the floor, let's uh, duplicate the floor. So now we have two floors um, with four rooms apiece. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into this room and um, we're going to set a, a high temperature just so that we can have it do the math. So we're going to say this is uh, 80 degrees. We'll say the room, um, I mean, I, I don't have to necessarily do it all in the same room, but we'll just do it here. We'll say that's 600. And we'll come down here to humidity. Since it's so hot, we'll set the humidity to about uh, 95%. And so now I have something in a room on another floor that we can go find that is um, different. And then what we might do is in floor one, we'll go down to this last room. And what I'm going to do here is um, we'll do a low. So we'll go ahead and set this to um, 50 degrees. Not a good thing. And then we'll change that to, um, let's say, 1,000 CO2 and set this humidity to uh, 65. All right, good enough. Oh, I probably should change some of these to false so that we have count. So in floor one, we'll have one room that's not being used, and then in floor two, um, what I'm going to do is make two rooms not being used. Okay, so right now I'm just mucking with the data, making my test data so that it can go find the uh, appropriate components. Okay, um, so here, set that to false. All right, so now I added multiple rooms I added multiple floors, so that's going to force me to go refresh the cache, right? So it's now going to go through and add all those points and all those tags into the analytic cache. Um, I need to go and pull again to actually get those to execute. So I'll go up and do that. Notice the size count got much bigger. And so now we've repolled. So now if I go down into, and we'll just use the interface that I uh, put on there, you'll see that, okay, at the building level, we get um, the 80 degree. So it found that uh, on floor one, and it found the minimum on floor two, and it gave us the average of all the temperatures. So it's evaluating at the building level all of the rooms, okay, and all of the floors. Same thing for relative humidity and the parts per million. The room count, remember how I turned off some? So you'll see that it found eight rooms and then I turned one off in floor one um, and then two off on floor two. So that's correct on that. And then I just did a, a nice little calculation to do percent utilization. So now if we go down into floor one, we're gonna see just the specifics for floor one. So high was 72, low was 50. Um, same thing for parts per million. Come down here to floor two we'll get those numbers, right? So we get 80 in there, um, average 74. But you can see now the two rooms out of four, 50% utilization, each calculation from the floor logic folder is executing either on the building, on the floor, or on the room level. And so that's how you do um, analytics. And this is all real time. I didn't even have any history files. You add history files and then you can have the fun of saying, what was the average temperature last week, right? So this is just saying uh, real time data, but that's how I create these relative ORDs. This is the secret and applying them in the same structure. And then I can get um, these that I can cut, copy and paste in any station that will give me those results. Now, the only thing I will give you the caveat when you get it down into the room, um, sometimes you'll get some wonky um, information if you only have one value for it to interpret. So just be be aware that sometimes this will um, give you an odd reading because it, it tries to sum up those true falses. But that's that's how I did it. That's how I cascade building, floor, down to the room. Uh, it's all about the relative ORD and using the analytics. And remember to pull, remember to refresh your cache, and make sure you have that auto tag on. Mm -hmm.